Hi, I am John Ponder, the Hope for Prisons. We're over at the Casa Grande Transitional Facility, a part of the Nevada Department of Corrections, and today is a monumental day for us as we're doing a ribbon cut ceremony as we have physically taken up space inside Nevada Department of Corrections to be able to provide a whole gamut of services to the men and women that can be released into our community to make sure they're better equipped with leadership training, uh, character building training, and vocational skills is going to be able to help them to maintain uh, sustainable jobs. John Ponder. Good morning. Thank you guys so much for uh, coming out. We know this is on a Saturday. We were strategic in doing this because of our great folks up in Carson City to have get for you guys to have an opportunity uh, to come down. And welcome to our ribbon cutting ceremony. Uh, it is a very monumental day uh, for not only Hope for Prisons, but also for the state of Nevada uh, as we address the needs for men and women that are returning home uh, from our judicial system. Uh, so again, I just want to thank uh, each of you for coming out. And uh, I just want to let you know as we move into this and we hear from uh, the speaker and the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee and uh, the head of the Nevada Department of Corrections, what makes it very exciting for, for this moment right now is to look around this room right now and see all the people so intricately involved. Because it takes the entire community in order for us to be successful in what it is that we do. And successful reintegration is not just a concern for those who return from prison. It is a matter of public safety and economic necessity. A criminal justice system that emphasizes incarceration but does not support the journey home is, it does a disservice to the, the community's safety providing effective rehabilitation and skill development for those incarcerated and formerly incarcerated is critical to strengthening families, the workforce, and our community. So one of the things that we're gonna be doing here, being very uniquely positioned inside Nevada Department of Corrections, it's gonna give us access to the nearly 6,000 men and women that are being released from corrections every single year. So Nevada Department of Corrections, specifically Director Zarenda, has given us a, a space here uh, inside Casa Grande. We're going to have a re-entry manager positioned here. We are going to have case management positioned here. We're going to have mentoring positioned here, including men and women from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Our coming in. There we go. We got that. <laughs> to come in and provide those, those mentoring services. But the exciting thing that we're going to do, this is going to, it's a fantastic opportunity for us to be able to provide vocational training. Because we know in order for men and women to successfully reintegrate, you know, they're gonna have to get a good job. But we know that employers are more likely to hire people who have that vocational skill set that's gonna be able to help them to be assets to the employer and not a liability. So this is a very, very unique opportunity for us. Thank you very much for coming out. We have truly turned the corner in reentry. And we're going to have an opportunity to hear from some of our folks that come down from Carson City. And thank you so very much for doing that. But I'm going to turn it over to the Director of the Nevada Department of Corrections, Mr. James Zarenda. All right. Well, I'll be quick. I just got a text that Governor uh, Sisolak was trying to be down here earlier. He's still stuck in Carson City at the airport trying to get out. Um, he wanted to make sure that everybody knew this is like the greatest thing on his plate today too because it helps all of us and helps the citizens in our city. So here's what I, uh, I really quickly wanted to say. When we do things um, that are in this type of a level where it involves multiple agencies, I see some of community partners here, I see Las Vegas Metro, the legislature, uh, Hope for Prisoners, the staff from Corrections, the jails. This is so important that we all take a piece of this. We all take a piece of success. Because even though our missions are all the same, which is reducing the victims in our community, and our goal is to get the offenders successful because our families, our communities are gonna be safer, we can't do this alone. We can't leave Las Vegas Metro to say that we're gonna keep the, you're gonna keep the streets safe for us. We're not gonna uh, say that the jails or Clark County Detention Center, you're gonna keep the streets safe for us. We're not gonna talk to the legislature and say, you gotta do a better job or, or you gotta help us keep the streets safe. This is all of ours. We all take responsibilities of this. Every one of us that I was mentioning has a piece for this success. And we have to make sure that we all share this success and we also share the pains of getting to there. And that's what John's trying to drive together. That's why we, 
uh, offer, we have an office now for Hope for Prisoners right in our facility. Uh, we're having their staff here that's gonna help connect with all these community partners, uh, the share partners for Job Connect, the uh, trades and all the skill partners to come in to teach these offenders those skills to be able to get the right jobs and the sustaining jobs, the higher paying wages so that they can sustain a family and, and a job in the community. Getting them the addiction services, getting all the community wraparound services for mental health, uh, the social health and human services, all these things have to play a part of the role. So we're gonna see this success as this rolls out. Today is just gonna be day one of that where it starts. And uh, I really got to thank Hope for Prisoners for really trying to get everybody together and really drawing those strings together. And all this is education for all of us on how we're going to be successful. Then we're going to have, in about two to three years from now, we're going to come back and we're going to say how successful this was, not only for my reduction in my prison population, where I can move some more money back into the community for all of us, but also to say that we have a safer community here in Las Vegas. Anyway, thank you everybody for coming. This is all awesome. Right. Moment. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I wish we had an opportunity to have each one of you come up and, and speak, but um, if we're going to, how this is going to fall, we're going to have a couple of the uh, community leaders come up and say a few words, and then we're going to make our way out into the front, and we're going to do the official ribbon cutting ceremony. And then for those of you who may be interested, um, the Nevada Department of Corrections staff said if you want to do a quick tour uh, after the ribbon cutting, they'd be more than happy to uh, take you on a quick tour. But first, if we can uh, please welcome up the Speaker of the Assembly, Mr. Jason Firestone. Thank you all for being here. First and foremost, welcome to District 8. This is my district. <laughs> uh, I am proud that, this, that, that Casa Grande is in District 8, and I have, I have been fighting for 12 years to support programs like this. Uh, this is certainly a labor of love for John Ponder. Uh, but I'm here to tell everyone here that it's not just John, you're not alone. Uh, you, you have folks in this community that are committed to this cause. Actually, I didn't think about this until I heard some folks say our friends. Could I have folks that are graduates or current participants of, the, uh, of HOPE uh, stand up? There we go. All right. helping folks reintegrate back into this community. So whether it's uh, allowing you to register to vote so that you fully participate in society, so you can take your kids with you to vote. Um, these folks here, and when I say these folks, I mean defense attorneys, prosecutors, judges, law enforcement, members of this community, they don't want to see you back in this system. They want to see you at work. They want to see you at a PTA meeting with your kids. They want to see you successful in this community. And I want you to know that you have partners that share that passion, that want to make sure that we give everybody second chances. And I think that this is a reflection of a culmination of partners in Nevada that believe in second chances. So I'm not going to hold us up from getting through some speakers and getting to the ribbon cutting. Uh, but we love this, and we love you, and we're proud of you. And we're going to continue to move programs like this forward because it's better for our communities, better for all of our families for the long term. So thank you all again for being here. Yes, yes, yes. Please welcome up the Senate Judiciary Chair, Assemblyman Steve Yeager. Good sir. Wow, what a fantastic day. Um, we get to do a lot of really great things in the legislature. Coming back to Las Vegas on a Saturday morning and seeing something like this is, is just incredible. Um, I don't remember if John knows this, but the first time I heard about this program, I want to say it was six, seven, maybe eight years ago, I was at the public defender's office and I watched a show on TV called Face to Face with John Ralston. And John Ponder was on that show and he was talking in a different way about reentry, um, in a different way than I had seen on the ground at the public defender's office. And I knew right away that was something that was gonna be fantastic. I don't think we could have ever predicted that we would be here six or seven years down the road. Um, you know, I think the real uh, success of what John has done, uh, one, is bringing all of us together. I mean, who, who could get all these people together on a Saturday? <laughs> but when John Ponder calls, you guys are like me, you take that call, you return that text message because you know he's poured his heart and his soul into this effort. And not just that, but it's a belief in redemption that everybody is better than the worst thing that they've ever done in their life. 
Um, you know, for far too long we've just opened up the doors of the prisons and we've expected people to be successful. That's not how the world works. We need to invest in people. We need to care about our fellow man. And I think that's what this program has done. I mean, the fact that you are all here um, giving of your time freely says a lot about uh, this community, says a lot about uh, your concern for making sure that, as John said, we're making sure that the public is safe. But more than that, we're not throwing people away. We're giving people a second chance. And that, does, that is what this is about. And I think the success rate that you see uh, really bears that out. So let me just add to what you've heard already uh, with a very hearty congratulations and a thank you to everyone for getting us to this point and for all the effort that I know you're going to do uh, in the future. So congratulations and thank you so much. Please join me welcoming up County Commissioner Michael Naft. Thank you. You've heard from the experts. I'm here on behalf of Clark County to thank John. He's been recognized by presidents. He's been recognized nationally and internationally for the work he's done on behalf of Hope for Prisoners. This is an example of uh, success. When you can have a collaboration between a nonprofit organization, local, state, federal government, uh, the way we're commemorating today, that is so valuable. Uh, and I'm grateful for him and your whole team at Hope for Prisoners. Um, uh, my colleague on the county commission is here. You want to join me and we can present this together? Sure. Take a second, Bloom. Thank you so much. The best thing about Clark County right here. Yeah. Yeah. As you know, uh, one of the most important things that we alluded to earlier is, is helping individuals get back to work, to get those, those good paying jobs to where they'll be able to take care of themselves and more importantly take care of their family. We could not do that without partnerships in the, in the community, not only with the employers that we partner with or the training partners that we partner with, but we could not do that without our, our, our partner from the Department of Employment and Training and Rehabilitation. And please welcome up Dr. Tiffany Tyler, the director of theater. I'll be brief and say that I am ecstatic to see Hope Foster today. Uh, honored to be able to partner in Hope and that today marks a true investment and a new bar for what we call rehabilitation. So in all the ways that you are making hope possible, not only for its citizens that are returning to our community, but for this community, let me say on behalf of Dieter, thank you for the work that you're doing and that you have a partner in us. Thank you so much. Before we move on to our uh, the ribbon cutting ceremony, I want to acknowledge uh, some of our board members. Thank you guys for coming out. I know many of you guys were out at the graduations last night. Uh, and so uh, Jack Martin, Director of Juvenile Justice in the back there, thank you so much for coming out. Yeah. The amazing Christina Weldeville, thank you so much. Chad Williams, hiding in the back there, Director of Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, and Mr. Peter Guzman from the Latin Chamber. And I'm gonna invite Peter up to share a few words before we head out for the river cut. Okay. I was going to say anything, but I'll be very brief. I just know one thing. Uh, my background, I grew up, I did most of my growing up on 28th Street of Bonanza. I should be a complete failure in statistic according to, uh, you know, what we see out there, but I wasn't. And I wasn't because of a few reasons. And that was because an amazing father who never, ever, ever left my side. In fact, I feel like when I was born, he hugged me and never let go. And I'm telling you, what he gave me was a thing called hope. Hope is the cure to the cancer that exists in society. If young men and women, if young people, just like me sitting on 28th Street, don't have hope, then they're not going anywhere but into being incarcerated, into, into a life of drugs. But if we, together, and this is what's so amazing about this program, when you look at everybody who's here, there's, there's no more excuses. Everybody's in this together. We have everybody from every walk of life here because we all understand that hope is the cure to cancer. Thank you. Thank you. So 
as we head out to uh, do the official ribbon cutting ceremony, I certainly want to recognize Senator uh, Pickett and also Senator Scott Hammond, who did an amazing job last night at the graduation. And I'd be honored if you guys would join us. Right. So one, two, three, all oh.